<laughs> welcome back, everybody. It's time for today's comedian. Please welcome to the show, Drew Dunn. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, band. Let's give a nice big round of applause for the band, guys. They're awesome. Great. Amazing. Yes, yeah, so my name is Drew Dunn. Uh, I, I come from a big family. I'm one of seven kids in my family. Yeah. That's how my parents took that job, seriously. Because most parents are like, we should stop it too and think about how we're going to pay for college. And mine are like, yeah, let's just see how close we can get to being poor while still having a house. Although I think my parents only had seven kids as a way of getting around having to do any sort of chores, you know? Like, ah, I gotta do the dishes today, but, but I don't wanna. You know, honey, we should hire a maid or someone to clean up around here. Um, we don't make enough money to hire someone for that. Well, let's make somebody. <laughs> let's make a lot of them. Because <laughs> I thought about it, and nobody has seven kids on purpose, right? Hmm, how can I have no free time, a high level of stress, no money, and no way out? Why would you ever do that to yourself? So, I mean, statistically, some of us are mistakes, or as Bob Ross would call us, happy little accidents. But <laughs> really, really, though, we're all just a result of poor planning. I mean, with seven kids, there's no good plan A, and it's more obvious that there was no plan B available either. <laughs> it's, it's tough to raise seven kids, though, you know? I mean, my mother was a saint. The fact that I'm standing here alive today is a testament to her patience. I mean, because you've all seen that mother of two in a grocery store somewhere. She's got the two kids. One's crying. One's running around. You're just like, ugh, how does she do it? She is so strong. Now picture my mom. You got one crying, one running around, one pulling stuff off of shelves, two force-feeding each other crayons, one sucking on your tit, and you're five months pregnant. <laughs> it's, uh, it's harder. It's harder to do. <laughs> You notice that I said my mother was a saint. Um, she's still with us, she just doesn't care anymore. <laughs> I feel like every parent has that threshold, and I realized that my mom had reached hers when I went over and my four-year-old brother was eating a chocolate bar for breakfast at 6.30 in the morning. It's like, she's just developed this, this attitude of employee that's been at a job for way too long, you know? Like, the job still gets done, but not quite the way that it should. <laughs> I just picture her handing them the chocolate, like, what, are they gonna fire me? I got tenure here. <laughs> it's different growing up in a house of seven kids, though. You know, money was usually pretty tight growing up, so uh, we'd, we'd go and get a lot of cheap eats, like uh, fast food. We had a lot of fast food growing up, which is fine when you're younger, but, but is it just me, or has fast food gotten worse over the years, you know? Because like, I went to McDonald's the other day. I was getting a little bit of lunch. I got a McChicken and some fries, and I brought it home and unwrapped it, and there was no bottom bun on my sandwich. <laughs> Which my first thought was like, all right, McDonald's, is this just some other McCafe gimmick? Like, oh yes, this is our open faced, deconstructed chicken cutlet tostada. Enjoy. <laughs> Can we all just say stop with that McDonald's? Like, no matter what you do, you're always going to be the place that we go for just the worst part of a cow ground up and smashed into a patty for a dollar. <laughs> Nobody's going there for a parfait. <laughs> So there was no bottom bun. I still ate it, by the way. I didn't go back and complain to McDonald's. I'm not a middle-aged mother. <laughs> is there seriously no bread on this? No, this is ridiculous. I need to speak to your 16-year-old manager right away. <laughs> but I was eating, and I got about halfway through, and that's when it really hit me, you know? Like, isn't the bottom bun the first step <laughs> to making a sandwich? <laughs> What kind of sandwich-making savage is behind the line at McDonald's? Like, all right, a McChicken. Meat on the counter! <laughs> Slap a bun on top, wrap it up, I'm loving it! <laughs> oh, man. And that's the kid who wants $15 an hour? Are you kidding me? We're more likely to outsource our fast food to somewhere in Asia before we ever pay that kid that amount of money. Although we do outsource a lot of jobs, you know, we do outsource a lot of jobs in this country. Like, have any of you had, tried to call a technical support line in the last, I don't know, 10 years? <laughs> they all sound exactly the same. <laughs> Hello, and thank you for calling any technical support company. Your call is important to us. All of our representatives are always assisting other callers. <laughs> Please stay on the line, and your call will be answered in the order in which it was received. Per Espanol Marque Dos. <laughs> And then you listen to like 10 kids bop songs and you finally get put through to just this defeated sounding guy. <coughs> Hello and thank you for calling any technical support company. My name is Paul. What do you want? 
This, this guy's name is not Paul, okay? I guess it's just an excuse for those companies to get around slavery now. They go over there and pick them out like, yeah, that one looks good. Hey, you, come over here. What's your name? Uh, my name, sir, is Rashwami Patel. I come from a long, long line of Patels whose heritage can be traced back thousands of years. Wow, it's pretty impressive. Your new name is Jeff. <laughs> Somebody get this guy a headset, he starts tomorrow. That's it for me, guys, thank you very much. Thank you, Drew, we'll be right back right after this. <laughs>